Um, there's been a lot of information out there on social media that the family profited from different television appearances and stuff like that, and they're profiting from you know their losses, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, for instance, they did not profit from being on Dr. Phil or ABC's 2020, so we just wanted to go on the record and let everybody know that they're not profiting from this. Anyway, they wanted us to share that with everybody. Um, next, um, the family has asked us to engage in discussions and start looking into a new law that would either criminalize or allow for um, civil penalties in the event that, um, um, you know, people of mass tragedies and stuff like that, the deceased are defamed, and so we've started to, to reach out to some different contacts and stuff like that. And um, finally, they ask us to close with, you know, it's time to let the case rest. Um, the Weld County DA's office, um, they did an amazing job along with law enforcement. The family couldn't be more thankful for the efforts of these individuals. And um, they just wanted um, everybody to, it, it's time to move on. And um, Mr. Watts was brought to justice, and so they're, they're very pleased with that result, and they're just asking that um, everybody move on and, and uh, when we talk about this stuff going on on the internet is it threats is it what is it that people are saying talk a little bit more about the new law that you were mentioning before what would it do well, we're just trying to um, not allow these these horrible people quite frankly out there that are just trying to you know say these horrible things about these people that have been involved in these, you know, horrible, evil um, acts against these families. And so the family also wanted to talk about some of the online retailing that has been going on. Uh, there's people out there making t-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, and stuff like that. Remember the Watts that bear Shanann's name, Bella's name, Nico's name, Celeste's name. They are not affiliated at all with that. They are not making a profit off of any of that. And they would encourage people to not endorse or participate in that kind of behavior. Um, there's been a lot of information out there on social media that the family profited from different television appearances and stuff like that, and they're profiting from you know their losses, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, for instance, they did not profit from being on Dr. Phil or ABC's 2020, so we just wanted to go on the record and let everybody know that they're not profiting from this. Um, also, um, we, we wanted everybody to know that the family has donated all the um, personal effects from Shanann Bella and um, Celeste to different charities and so people were able to you know use their um, you know their personal items and hopefully to better somebody else's life and so anyway they wanted us to share that with everybody Um, next, um, the family has asked us to engage in discussions and start looking into a new law that would either criminalize or allow for um, civil penalties in the event that, um, um, you know, people of mass tragedies and stuff like that, the deceased are defamed, and so we've started to, to reach out to some different contacts and stuff like that, and so we'll keep um, the news media informed as that progresses, but um, they did want us to know that, and then um, finally they asked us to close with, you know, it's time to let the case rest. Um, the Weld County DA's office, um, they did an amazing job along with law enforcement. The family couldn't be more thankful for the efforts of these individuals, and um, they just wanted um, everybody to, it, it's time to move on, and um, Mr. Watts was brought to justice, and so they're, they're very pleased with that result, and they're just asking that um, everybody move on, and, and um, we, they would like to thank everybody for, for their time today for coming out to listen to the statement, and um, now we're ready to open it up to any questions that, um, that you all may have. When we talk about this stuff going on on the Internet, is it threats? Is it, what is it that people are saying? It's a lot of different things. I, I think the parts that disturb the family a lot, and I know Tom was mentioning it earlier, people who are, or Brad also mentioned earlier, are people who are 
armchair detectives going out there trying to find scraps of evidence say that, oh, that, you know, Chris really wasn't the killer, it was X, or, you know, his original confession was the true confession and Shanann did have a hand in this, or there's some sort of conspiracy going on to it. That kind of stuff bothers them a lot, but there have been a number of instances of people reaching out to them, threatening them anonymously. Not even just them, I, I, we know that a lot of people associated even tangentially with the family or the house or law enforcement have undergone a lot of this harassment as well. It's, it's multifaceted and it is complex and it's nice to have organizations that are out there who are able to tackle that in a way that 10, 20 years ago we would never have had. Are they afraid that this is that once this movie premieres it's going to resurrect some of that harassment that they've experienced in the past? They are. They're concerned about it, that, that that could continue to happen. And to your other question, I, I think certainly the, the most hurtful things, and Stephen mentioned them, are anything where they implicate Shanann um, and refer back to the original confession and talk about the fact that she was somehow involved in this and blaming the victim and, and, and somehow asserting that she had something to do with the murder of her children. Um, Clearly, that's the most offensive thing to the family and, and upsets them. And along with the discussion we had with them this afternoon, even they were telling us that what's hurtful is when they're actually showing, you know, Shanann being strangled, actually, in, in the movies and showing the girls being hauled out to the oil site and stuff like that. So it's stuff like that. It's just hard to, to, to watch. And, and um, anyway, that's very, very hurtful. So. I'm sure you guys have been in contact with, with the family regarding this. Could you describe what state they were in when you told them this movie's premiering and it's just weeks away? They actually were the ones that brought it to our attention. They had seen the, the People article and I imagine it was brought to their attention even by somebody else that's a friend of theirs or a family friend, something like that. It's It's been more... In, at least from my personal perspective of it, more hurtful to see the actual depictions themselves. It's one thing to hear that there's going to be a depiction of your daughter being murdered and that it's going to air over and over and over again. You're going to see trailers for it over and over and over again. Then it is to actually see those things. And so it, it's very difficult for them. I mean, once again, when, when we talk about laying this case to rest, letting it be over, it's all instances of it. It's not just people making these movies. It's not just people issuing threats online. It's people talking about it pretty much in general. They haven't really had that opportunity that a lot of victims get to mourn, predominantly just because of the culture that we have right now. People hear about it all over the world now. But can you describe the emotional state they were in when they when you discussed this? Was this anger? Was this uh, hurt? Was this pain? I would say both, anger and hurt. Um, but 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 would would say that it leans more towards pain. Um, that they at least in conversations that I've had um, with both Frank and Sandy have just indicated how horrible it is to to relive that. And as I referred to earlier, uh, the the call that I had with them around Christmas, and they said, you know, we woke up this morning and watched a depiction of our daughter being strangled, and it just it brings everything back up to the surface all over again. Um, so. As much as I hate to ask this, I mean, do you think they actually will end up watching it just out of curiosity to see how their family ended up being portrayed, or is it too graphic for them to actually uh, sit down and watch? I, I think they go back and forth on that. I mean, it'd be very difficult, even just referring on a personal basis, if something like this had happened to me, it'd be difficult not to watch it and not to see what exactly happened. It's unclear at this point. I mean, yes, they'll have access to it. They have the Lifetime channel. It's something that comes with a lot of major basic cable uh, packages, but we are not sure at this point if they'll watch it. I mean, once again, they've seen the trailers. They've seen what the movie is predominantly going to portray, but obviously saying that you're going to see it, saying you're going to watch it, and actually sitting down and being able to stomach sitting through it are two different things. Do we foresee legal action being taken after this movie airs? I'd say it's unlikely. We've discussed it, but unfortunately in the United States there's a lot of protections for people in these kinds of situations, production companies in these situations you wouldn't see in places like the UK or Germany or France where there is a lot more protection for people who are victims and who have biopics made about them. Yeah. At this point we don't anticipate 
engaging in any litigation over the Lifetime movie. Could you talk a little bit more about the new law that you were mentioning before? What would it do? Well, we're just trying to um, not allow these these horrible people, quite frankly, out there that are just trying to, you know, say these horrible things about these people that have been involved in these, you know, horrible, evil um, acts against these families. And so um, we're not sure at this point whether or not there could be a criminal element to it, but, um, you know, we're certainly hoping at a minimum we can work with, you know, possible there's different national organizations that are, that are very much in Inclined to, to help maybe push forward with this, as well as you know, we're going to be looking at um, state representatives and stuff like that, reaching out to them. But then we just started to to get involved in that, and the families ask us to look into it. So I think at this point, everything's on the table. We understand there's going to be some hurdles, you know, along the way. Yeah, to be clear, it's in the very initial stages. It's mostly been talk um, from us to our, with our clients about it. Yeah, it's a pretty common conception of the law that you cannot defame the dead. Obviously, different countries have different ways of handling that. That's the problem, is that people are out there defaming Shanann, defaming Bella, Celeste, and Nico, and the dead can't fight back. To, to, to please reconsider if you're thinking about posting something or if you see something like that just not to engage with it for example you know the whatever it is coffee mugs t-shirts or whatever that say shenan on them those aren't products that have anything to do with the family and in in some instances they're they're not done well, it's not tasteful, and it's, and, it, and it's hurtful to the family. So they just want people to not, to not engage in any of that, and mainly to not engage in, in the continued sort of internet bullying and, and re-victimization that, that they feel they've, uh, has taken place. And along with the fact, if there's any statements made through the family, somebody from our firm will be along there with them. And so if you're just reading stuff on the internet and stuff like that, um, you know, it's more than likely not true. And so um, if you have questions whether or not something is authentic or not, please feel free to give our office a call and we'll let you know. And correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I do believe Jeanette just had a birthday recently. Do you think this makes it even more difficult for the family, a birthday, and then the movie launching in the same month, just weeks apart? It is, and, and one of the blessed things about Facebook and one of the things that's difficult for people who have gone through tragedies like this is that social media reminds you of things like that. You posted this picture two years ago. Do you want to reshare it? There is a birthday coming up for somebody that you love. For people who have gone through tragedies like this, there are almost constant reminders, and that's just one of them. One of the things I would say to sort of take away from this is that they as a family have felt predominantly powerless through this process. We as their attorneys and a lot of the people that care about them, the law enforcement agencies and the honor network, are just trying to give them some back some of the power that they've lost through this process. And prepare you for right? From our understanding, no. Can you clarify when Shanann's birthday was it January 10th? I wouldn't know off the top of my head. I don't know either. We know it was recent. We saw postings about it on Facebook, but not off the top of our heads. I should ask too, would the family feel differently about this movie had they been given the option to give some input? Those scenes, those horrible scenes, those would still happen. Would they feel differently if they were more accurate? So I, I know I mentioned it earlier. There have been people who have reached out that have shown the correct way of doing these things. When you involve victims and the people who knew victims best, it makes it a lot easier to make a portrayal of somebody. And so they have been happy and engaged when they're able to take apart and assert some more of that control and power over some of these depictions of their daughter and grandchildren 
when something like this comes up and the power is completely taken away from them, it does hurt them and it does make them, to a certain extent, angry. Anything that we've missed? Not particularly. Yeah, that's, that's what the family wanted to have shared. Can you um, see when we got your first name? Can you give us Sure, I'm Tom Grant, G R A N T, and I'm a partner in the law firm Grant and Hoffman. So that's Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Brad Hoffman, uh, make sure I've got your name and partner. Thank you so much. All right, all right. thank you guys for coming. They wanted to express appreciation to you all coming out. Yep. Thank you guys. Yep. And if I need my phone to keep.